Brunson inside the heart. Hearts banks it in. And a foul. Gets away, lobs it up to Durant. Blocked. A chew on heart stop. Brunson dives, kicks it over to a chew. DiVincenzo, corner three. Got it. And that one in and out. Hart the rebound by Donovich ahead of the pack. Goes inside. So in the NBA, you'll take all the wins you can get, even when it's not pretty. And tonight's game would be the definition of a non-pretty win. The Knicks scored 113 points against the worst team in the NBA. They gave up 111. We won by two points. I understand that there was a questionable call on Dante DiVincenzo, but Thompson did not have possession of the ball, which is why the contact was not called. I know a lot of people are going to complain about that. Well, the Knicks got screwed, bro. Last week against the Houston Rockets, literally Jalen Brunson was called for a foul when he didn't even touch the opposing players. So I don't want to hear anything down below about the, the Pistons getting robbed because the Knicks just got robbed, man. But this game, overall, we just found a way to get it done. I mean, we feel like we should not have won this game. I mean, I understand we were up 13, I think like 16 at one point, but we just let the Pistons come back. Like Fournier was hitting some threes, Grimes was hitting some threes, some former Knicks, and even... And then Thompson hit a three-pointer. He's shooting 15% from three. Just things were not going right for the Knicks. But because we stayed with the play and got after it, and then Jalen Brunson, the ball found the, the, uh, the way into his hands, and Brunson came down, bounced past it to Hart, and got the N1. Hart did miss two of his three free throws. He missed the N1, but then he was able to get it back, get fouled, and then he missed one of the two. But thankfully, he kind of did miss that because the ball was able to go back into the Knicks and the clock was able to run out. This was just a weird game. It was one of those that we're going to forget about probably tomorrow. We're going to talk about it now and then we're going to go to sleep and then just forget about it as we should. I mean, this was just not a win to remember, but I'm glad we did because this was a game we could not have afforded to lose. Like you have to understand that we're now two games behind the Bucks for that number three seed. If we had lost this game, it would have pushed us even farther back. We would have technically been three. Yeah, we would have been three games out of that. And I get the Bucks are struggling. I mean, they're five and five in their last 10. We're four and six. Well, actually, technically, we're five and six in our last 11. This isn't updated, but the Bucks are just kind of dealing with some coaching issues and some struggles. The Knicks are without three starters, and it's not like they're three decent starters. We're talking about Julius Randle, an all NBA player. OG and Anobi, one of the best defenders in the NBA, the biggest spark that the Knicks have added in a long time. And then Mitchell Robinson, who's our best defender, one of the best rebounders, the best offensive rebounder in basketball. We know what he does as a rim protector. I mean, Mitch can get two, three blocks in a hurry. And we're still finding ways to win games, to be in games. I understand we lost to Boston, of course, Saturday night. But overall, we were in that game. We were going up against the best team in the NBA with without three of some of our most important players so i was happy with the, the way the knicks fought i was happy tonight with how the knicks were able to just find a way to win because i really could care less how we win as long as we win because at this point in the year we're just trying to get by we're trying to stay afloat the knicks do not need to get to the two seed they just need to get to the three seed so that way we don't have to face boston until the eastern conference finals now assuming boston and the knicks are able to get out of the first two rounds but our best case scenario would be to wait until the last possible opportunity to play against the Celtics. Because I don't think there's another team in the East that would be able to beat us. A fully healthy Knicks team, obviously, like the Cavs and the Bucks, I don't think would be able to beat us. And then like Philadelphia, it, like there's just, it, of course, the first two rounds are going to be extremely difficult. It's the playoffs. We still need to see what this team looks like at full strength. We still need to see Julius Randle be able to go out there and shrug off his woes because Randall has statistically been the least efficient player in the NBA playoff history but I just feel like there's something different about this Knicks team we finally have depth and we're just kind of waiting to get guys back like I haven't even seen any of the latest reports on OG so he has not progressed to contact drills or any work with his right arm following right elbow surgery on February 8th so yeah I mean OG we're talking about you know 20 days ago got surgery and he's not con in contact right now Julius Randall uh wednesday he said last wednesday that uh surgery hasn't been ruled out but he's hoping to avoid it, doing everything he can to get back as soon as possible so we don't know when og and randall are coming back mitchell robinson probably if he were to come back would be in the playoffs i mean he's not even currently wearing a walking boot but he hasn't started running so 
it just sucks because it seemed like this was the next year. I mean, we got extremely hot with Randall and OG, and then all of a sudden they're out. It just was devastating. And we were able to win, but then of course as time went on, we we, you know, we lost four in a row. And but it's just the fact that the Knicks are even where they are right now. I mean, we're looking at a team that could be going potentially into the playoffs as a top four seed. I definitely don't think that we'll fall below four. The question is, where will we finish? Will it be two, three, or four? But even if we are the four seed, I mean, of course, yeah, like Boston, we'd have to play them in the second round. But to that point, I mean, we should be healthy. Like OG will definitely be back. Julius Randle should be back for that. I mean, when did the playoffs start? April, right? March. I think the playoffs start in April. Um, let's check when the next uh, last game is. Our last game is April 14th. So we're talking about mid-April. I mean, that is a little less than two months away. So we should be good in that game, honestly. And even though like this game was kind of sloppy, I mean, there were some really, really sloppy possessions defensively and offensively. But the Knicks, that ball ends up getting into Brunson's hands and he hits hard for the end one. I mean, when that happened, like it just feels like a different Knicks team. Like for those of you that have been watching the Knicks the past couple of years, I mean, there's been just so many plays like that where the ball does not go into our hands and we end up losing i mean this would have been an embarrassing loss like the detroit pistons a team that on the season has eight wins but we found a way and i feel like this win's definitely going to help us for the future because i mean the pistons played so aggressively tonight defensively getting after offensively they were getting some good looks and knocking them down i mean kate cunningham looks like he's gonna be a superstar in the nba man this dude is so good Quentin Grimes, all 14 of his points came in the fourth quarter. And um, there was also some good moments out of Jalen Duran. I liked what I saw out of him. Dude had 16 rebounds. I feel like it was a quiet 16 rebounds. I mean, maybe it's just me, but I know I know Duran gets a lot of rebounds, but 16 rebounds is a, a lot of rebounds. Normally we're seeing Achua or Hartenstein grab that, but to see someone else get that on us is kind of weird. And yeah, the Pistons, it's a team that Man, I know they're kind of been clowned for that losing streak they had, but they just got after the Knicks tonight, and the Knicks were able to still find a way to win. Like, Jalen Brunson took 26 shots tonight. Kind of crazy. He was 3 of 11 from 3. Brunson's 3 was off. Um, he did have a 3 late in this fourth quarter, but I'm just glad that, man, like, DiVincenzo and, like, just getting after that ball and giving us a chance, man. I, like, honestly, the loudest I probably screamed during a Knicks game this season was or it was probably when Brunson had fifth day that crazy 50 point game but like I'm just saying that and one bro was fired up like I got out of my seat and I was just like I felt like we were about to lose like all of a sudden I'm looking at the ball going out there I'm like if he gets possession of that we're probably screwed and then all of a sudden we're on it and in the end like it just was a crazy crazy sort of uh transition I don't even know if that's the right way to phrase it but a segment it was just it was just a crazy action-packed game there was a lot of physicality they let the two teams play i mean you could definitely argue the pistons were more physical than us and i think you 100 percent be correct i mean it's just not often where the knicks get bullied and they were bullied tonight but i mean obviously we have the better roster and more experience so we we're able to find a way but you know the pistons i mean in a couple of years they could be really good if they can sort of turn this around and, and get some veteran players and i feel like the pistons just don't have any veterans man like like the knicks are a young team as well but we've got guys like a bogdanovich of course, I mean, DiVincenzo is young, but he, I feel like DiVincenzo, he's been around with a couple of teams and he's played on a lot of winning teams. And uh, I don't know, man, we, we really are a young team if you think about it. But it, it's just I'm just glad we got the win, man. There's no other way around it. And our next game is going to be against the New Orleans Pelicans. Um, that's going to be tomorrow. Wow, we actually have a back to back. I did not know that. OK, so we play tomorrow at 630. I'm going to assume that that game's at home back to back with them coming in. And then Thursday's against Golden State. That's going to be an awesome game. The Dubs are, uh, they did lose to the Nuggets yesterday, of course, but they have been playing like their best basketball. And then we're talking about the Cavs. So, like, there's some tough teams, man. I mean, we're talking about Zion, Curry, Donovan Mitchell. Like, there's three really, really all NBA type of players coming in. And yeah, the Knicks have to be ready for it. And I think they will be ready for it. And uh, it's going to be interesting, too, because we do have the Magic and a back to back with Philadelphia coming up so yeah we're about to figure out real quick how far the knicks are truly going to get up in the standings but if we can get up to the three seed i'd be so pleased i just feel like we need og because like we're we are lacking right now we're, we're lacking scoring outside of jalen brunson like let's just not act like not act like that's not the case uh, josh hart absolutely had 23 tonight uh divincenzo has been really good as a scorer but bognanovich was 5 of 11 i just feel like we're missing scoring i mean i feel like you guys would agree with me 
And that's where Julius Randle comes in because you know, Randle is a guy that can give us 24 to 27 a night. And to just lose that is, is devastating, man. And also to lose your best defender, a guy that's giving you, you know, 15 a night in OG. So, but yeah, that's the video, guys. Hopefully you have a great night. Thank you for watching today in the video. It's your boy, Nick's Daily, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.